Hello and welcome to another Primo tutorial. Our goal in this video is to learn some of the basic features in Primo that'll help make our lives a little easier. I'm going to do that by running a sample search and then showing you what these features are along the way. If you have any questions on where to find Primo or how to sign in, I highly recommend watching our super quick Welcome to Primo video. But if you're all set, let's go ahead and get started. When we have Primo pulled up and we're signed in, let's go ahead and enter a topic. Then we can click the magnifying glass or hit the enter key. The wonderful thing about Primo is that it searches all available databases at once, so it will often return a lot of results. We should narrow it down using the filters that appear to the left side of the screen. Now, the filters you use should depend on the goals of your research or assignment. For example, my professor wants me to use recently published, peer-reviewed articles for my paper on climate change. So let's go ahead and select the appropriate filters to narrow our results to peer-reviewed journals, articles as my resource type, limit creation date to within the last five years, and then I can also narrow the search down by subject, but I'll skip that part for now. I can then click Apply Filters. While we're on the subject of filters, one useful feature to be aware of is the Remember All Filters button. Even if we edit our search terms, the filters will stay and we won't have to reselect the same filters again. Underneath that, there's a Reset Filters button that will clear all the checkboxes if we ever do want to start fresh. And lastly, there is a Save Query button at the top of the page of results. If you don't see this button, it's likely that you're not signed in, so make sure you do so first. This will save your current search settings, including your filters, so if we ever have to pause and come back to it later, we can go to our favorites by clicking the Push Pin button at the top right next to our name, and it should appear under Saved Searches. Let's return to that original topic, and let's look through some of the results. Knowing if an article works for my research or assignment is going to require a little more investigation, so let's see what else Primo can help with. The first thing I want to point out is that similar to saving queries, we can also save records. Whenever you click the push pin button at the top right of each record, that tells Primo to save the articles to your favorites so you'll have them for later. Now let's go to the send to section. There's a lot of useful buttons here, including email, which allows us to send the permalink to ourselves or someone who would be interested. Citation is also very helpful if we're looking to include it in a bibliography for a paper or assignment. We can even select the format we need. And finally, the permalink button copies the link to this Primo page to our clipboard, and we can paste it wherever we'd like. Now, let's go down further to the View Online section. This section may appear differently or not appear at all depending on the availability of the article. In those cases, it'll provide you with options on how to request access or it may direct you to use Google Scholar. But for now, let's consider sources that are tagged with Available Online. The databases and journals where we'll be able to find the full article will be listed here. Ideally, all of them should contain the full PDF article, so make sure to check other links and databases if the one you chose doesn't seem to have it. We can click any one of them and it should take us to a database. Now every database looks a little different, but they should all have links to the full PDF article or a PDF viewer. Now moving right along, the details section is where we find the authors and contributors, the journal or publication the article was a part of, and how many times our search terms appear. It also includes a description or the abstract of the article. Next, the very bottom of the record has links if something doesn't seem to be working correctly or some or all of the links to the article aren't working. It even has links that redirects you to Google Scholar. And finally, there are buttons that lead you to related articles too that cites this article or is being cited in this article. Hopefully, that gave you a little insight to some of the features that Primo offers. Make sure to check out the rest of the tutorial videos for an even deeper dive on more advanced search strategies using Primo. And if you have any questions or run into any issues, you can live chat with a librarian using the Ask Us tab right in Primo on the right. That's it for now, and happy searching!